A viewer asked if I could talk about lenses and the D3400. For this series, Nikon loaned me the camera along with the kit lens, but also sent along the Nikkor 70-300. This lens is in Nikon's budget range, and a good match for the D3400. There are lenses in the Nikkor catalog that cost several multiples of the cost of this camera. Always remember that lenses will last much longer than the body. It's worthwhile investing in good glass. Nikon has been making lenses for a long time, and many of those older lenses are compatible with this camera. All lenses that have an F-mount bayonet can be used with this camera. F-mount describes the size and connection type that hold the lens to the camera. Back in the days before autofocus and auto exposure, F-mount lenses were fully manual exposure and focus. They included a dial to set the aperture, another to set the distance. Zoom lenses were still but a twinkle in Pierre Ingenieur's eye. Zoom lenses fall into several ranges. Standard zoom, also called walkabout lenses, typically 18 to 55, like the kit lens, 24 to 70, 24 to 105, give or take a millimeter or two. These general purpose lenses serve a variety of purposes, from landscapes to portraits, Although they aren't really useful for photographing sports or wildlife, a longer zoom, extending to 300 or even 500 millimeters, is more useful for those activities. In the other direction, wide-angle lenses, less than 20 millimeters, provide a large field of view for landscape and architecture. Pushed to the extreme, these become fisheye lenses, which are generally quite distorted around the edges. But let's return to this lens, the AFP DX Nikkor 70 to 300 f 4.5 to 6.3 G ED VR. Like reading a wine label, dissecting the name will help us understand the lens. Much of this is marketing and not all manufacturers use the same terminology or technology that Nikon does, so much of this applies specifically to Nikkor lenses, but similar marketing terms and abbreviations are used by all lens manufacturers. AFP is a legacy term. It means autofocus, to separate this lens from earlier models that didn't autofocus. The P indicates that the pulse motor is used. More expensive lenses use the S, or silent motor. Although it's very quiet, you can hear the motor. DX is Nikon for the smaller APS-C, or 1.6 crop sensor. That's the standard size for DSLR cameras, as well as many mirrorless models. Nikon also makes FX, or full-frame lenses, for full-frame sensors. The APS-C sensor in the D3400 is smaller by a factor of 1.6 than the standard 35mm film area, 36mm by 24mm, of the full-frame sensor. How do they get 36mm onto a piece of film that's 35mm wide? By turning it sideways. The 24mm height is 35mm minus 11mm for the sprocket holes. Now you know. Lenses designed for DX or APS-C size produce a smaller image area, and that corresponds to the smaller sensor. When mounted on an FX camera, DX lenses will have a black vignette around the edges of the image. This also means that an FX series lens with a 70 to 300 mm zoom would provide the equivalent of 105 to 450 mm on a DX sensor like the D3400. Just to give a sense of what 70 to 300 represents, this is the kit lens at 18 and at 55 millimeters. Now the 70 to 300 at 70 and at 300. More expensive zoom lenses operate internally, unlike this one, where the lens extends as you change the focal length. Look for IR in the lens name. This is a zoom lens with a variable focal length. Nikon also makes prime lenses with a fixed focal length. Because primes have fewer moving parts, they usually provide a sharper image. The various prime focal lengths are designed for specific applications, like 85mm for portraits. Google and YouTube will provide lots of explanations and examples. If you're interested in understanding why a specific focal length is interesting, 
F 4.5 to 6.3. F is the measurement used to define the aperture or lens opening. A smaller number, which equates to a larger opening, lets more light onto the sensor, which enables a faster shutter and a lower ISO. Faster and lower are good. Larger apertures also reduce the depth of field to create a nicely blurred background. That said, the 70 to 300 zooms in far enough to create a nice blur, as long as the subject is close to the camera. There are two numbers because the aperture on this lens ramps. It closes down as it zooms in. More expensive lenses have larger apertures, smaller f numbers, and a constant aperture for the entire focal length. ED refers to the type of glass used. This is extra low dispersion glass to reduce chromatic aberrations. VR, vibration reduction, is Nikon's in-lens stabilization. This means that the lens's elements are sensitive to and respond to the camera's movement. Although it seems like a video feature, this really works best with stills, and is particularly useful when zoomed in on a small area. Some lenses have a switch to enable or disable this feature. This lens has a defined travel for the zoom. The large ring with the focal length markings goes about one quarter turn from wide to tight, and it must be turned manually to change the focal length. It has the right amount of friction to turn smoothly while recording video. The smaller ring in front is focus. However, as this lens can autofocus, which is controlled by a motor, and that's usually called focus by wire, there is a clutch to enable manual adjustment in manual focus mode. Some lenses have manual focus switches. Here it's selected from the menu. More expensive lenses have a defined travel for focus, and many have markings to indicate the focus distance. The advantage that provides, particularly for video, is the ability to change the focus in a repeatable fashion. It's a technique called rack focus that's frequently used in movies. I'm not saying you can't do it with this lens, just saying it's difficult. There's one more lens feature that's invaluable for video. The ability to maintain focus throughout the zoom range. Lenses that do that are called parfocal. They're usually expensive and usually referred to as cine lenses. None of the Nikkor lenses claim to be parfocal. Although there's an optional lens hood available, neither of these lenses include a hood. A hood can be useful to block light from reflecting into the lens, causing flares. Another common lens option is a protective filter, sometimes called UV, which protects the lens itself from collecting dirt or being damaged. They've saved my lenses more than once. Other types of filters, called ND for neutral density, reduce the amount of light reaching the lens, making it possible to use wider apertures and slower shutter speeds, and other filter types abound. Final thing, in the exposure segment on the D3400, I complained that aperture can't be changed in live view with the kit lens. I thought there was a specific E in the lens name to indicate that live view aperture was supported, but it's not in this lens's name, and it can be adjusted in live view. Thanks so much for watching. Questions in the field below. I do reply to all relevant and civil questions. I've made several videos to help you master the D3400. They're listed in the description below.